Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to 30 Teens and 30 Dreams and Destination University. I'm your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon, founder of Dream College Academy and College Essay Bootcamp. If you are a college-bound teen or a champion of one, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Sit tight. You're going to learn today about Marion, and I'm super excited because it's our first international institution. So she's choosing between Canadian schools. So let's meet Marion here. You see here, she attends Catholic school here in Southern California, and you see she's been admitted to a number of colleges, and she's also earned several scholarship merit scholarship dollars. So I'll have her explain a little bit about that as well. She speaks Russian. I know, right? Pretty cool. And she's planning to major on in international relations. So help me cheer her on and tell us, tell her that we are so proud of her. And we're going to do a sound check here. Marion, go ahead and unmute yourself and oops, go ahead and unmute yourself. And uh, let's see, are you ready to rock and roll? Yep, I'm here. All I'm right, here. fantastic. Okay. All right. So before we get started, tell us who you have with you today. So this is my mom. She has been here through everything, literally all the tears and happiness of getting accepted and trying to finish all these applications. And we literally, she sat with me for all the applications from doing it for five to seven hours a day. And she just sat with me and helped me with my essay and everything like that. So yeah, she's here. Hello. Hi, mom. I remember meeting mom on the phone. And if your jaw just dropped listening to what Marion just had to say, five to six, seven hours a day, truth talk, everyone, truth talk. This is yeah. a this is a part-time job. Um, and if you just have to treat it that way. So uh, I know, Marion, you're going to give some great advice today. So the first question, I have five questions for everyone. The first question is share a little bit about sort of the list, the range of schools that you applied to, you know, how you came to that list and any scholarship dollars you earned. So I wasn't very lucky in the sense of COVID was basically involved in all of my college decisions and choosing the colleges I would be able to apply to because I always wanted to do international or study abroad. And with a major in international relations, they actually suggest that you study abroad for your undergrad to kind of get an understanding of other cultures, other policies, everything like that. So I always knew I wanted to do international, but with COVID, it kind of became very difficult. So I remember school has a website called Naviance, which other schools probably do. And there was a section that said students like you, no pun intended, but I'll tell you that later. And it came across St. Thomas University, which is a Canadian school in New Brunswick. So it's on the East Coast. I checked it out because I was like, what, what do I have to lose? I can just see if I don't like it, I don't like it. If I do, I do great. So I checked it out and they actually contacted me first after I submitted my information. And it was a personalized email, everything. They wanted to get to know me. And I just thought that was the coolest thing because no college had ever done that to me before. So I just felt wanted, which is sometimes very difficult to feel because there are so many colleges you want to look at and so many colleges that you want to go to, but you're trying to find one that wants you just as much as you want them. So I felt that connection right away. I thought it was the coolest thing. I told my mom, I was so excited to do this Zoom and the Zoom was only supposed to last an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops. It lasts about two to three hours for one day. And another tour, which was a virtual tour, which is supposed to be two hours, lasted four to five. So I kind of thought that was a good sign. I, I enjoyed it. I was very active in it. But then the question was, if COVID still continues, what's going to happen? Am I going to stay here or take that risk and go international? So then I applied to Cal State's UC schools which are very safe schools. They're difficult to get into, but they're safe. So you should always, if you're from California, from any state, you want to apply to a school that's in your state to be safe because you want to go to college. You can always transfer out if you don't like it. You can always, but at least you have a start somewhere. So I suggest to do that. And so I apply to eight schools. I've gotten six acceptances out of seven. I'm still waiting for one more. And I got about $100,000 in scholarships from um, multiple schools and stuff like that. Now, did you have to apply separately to these scholarships or these were just merit dollars based on your application? 
Well, for two of the schools, it was based on my application. And for one of them, I was very surprised I got accepted because it was a group interview. And I tried to show my interest, but there were girls who were like, I've been talking about this school for years. I want to go to, I was like, oh, I'm not going to go to this school. I get accepted with a $10,000 scholarship. So I was super surprised. I was telling my mom, I'm not going to get in. It's fine if I don't. I'm already accepted somewhere. I got in. So you can't really disclose that. Even if it doesn't seem like you did a good job, you probably did. You just don't think about it. So then that was one of the schools. And then for Canadian schools, I had to apply separately because it isn't the same as United States schools. They're not connected in any way. And I wanted to be safe because I was worried if I didn't do it via their school, something could go wrong. So I just stuck to those schools. So, so good. Oh my gosh. Can you guys see how we fell in love with Marion? She was in the first <laughs> camp last summer. I'm like, do you see? Like, we loved her. <laughs> um, okay, so question number two is, um, this is a, a sort of a broad question. So over the course of high school in your college admission journey, looking back now, what did you do right? In other words, um, and using that, what you did right, like what's your good advice for younger students? I think it was the fact that I was very involved in what I was doing. I may not have joined every single club there is because there are people who do do that, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But I just joined minimal clubs and I was so involved in them. Well, not minimal. You or not minimal. You like you belong to yeah, a solid group. I, solid group. I'm not saying I don't do, but I was involved. And whatever I was doing, I dedicated my time to that. And if I had problems, I would go to them, talk to them to try to figure out ways so I can still stay dedicated, even though I could have been busy. And I think another major factor was that I was on the golf team for four years. So it showed that I was very consistent. Even if I had tough times, I did not give up. I still pushed through it and I stayed consistent. And sadly, this is my last year, but it was a very open, it kind of taught me to kind of make my time in certain aspects more important like to I to prioritize which is what colleges are looking for that you know that you can prioritize your time choose your time wisely because they're not going to baby you so it kind of helped to do that in that aspect. can I add okay. something to that? Yeah, go ahead. important that she did that the clubs that she joined she stayed in it throughout the duration yeah. she didn't jump in and out of things she figured out what she loved, and then <laughs> she really kind of kept up with it. You know, she didn't just kind of jump in and out. She stayed consistent with what yes. she's doing. Yeah, I, I love what you're saying because um, uh, I saw, I was looking over your, uh, you know, resume and the golf and the French Honor Society, I want to say, and mm -hmm. clinics, just consistency and listeners and, and viewers, if you're, you know, doing, listening for the first time to, and following what we, what we talk about, our philosophy is, you know, exactly what Marianne is saying. They're looking for your dedication, your longevity. How is it related to maybe what you want to major in later? Th those kinds of things. So when I see like French society and you want to major in international relations, that's one of those things that I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So. And it was also, I did an international study abroad program for my school for two weeks, which is also super important for my major. So the fact that I was able to do that, which my school, I'm not saying all schools offer it, but if that's what you want to do and your school offers it, take it because it's a one in a lifetime chance or you can probably do it in college but for me it was a one in a lifetime chance at that moment especially with covid yeah. i never realized that i would never have that opportunity again for a while yes she did it in her sophomore sophomore year, year. so it's lucky yeah. she would never have been able to do it in either her junior or her senior year yeah when i worked at a, a private high school as well we would offer that and i i knew families that would you know they started saving you know, because they want to take advantage of that. So really good point, showing that you are, um, you know, you've been exposed to other parts of the world before even getting to college. Okay, so question number three is all about your coolness factor. And we talk about coolness factor and Dream College Academy yes. and College of Boot Camp. So what do you think your coolness factor was? I think I'm going to tie this in with my essay. I think my essay I wrote about how in high school I was about 14, 15 at the time. I'm Russian, which obviously you kind of figured with me speaking Russian a little bit. And somebody came up to me in a football game and called me a communist to my face. 
and I, and this is a grown man. This is 40, 50 years old. You should know better. Um, and I was 15 and I was kind of very surprised by that because I never really thought that somebody would have the decency to come up to me and say that. And so I basically wrote how in my essay, I was very like pushing for that stereotype to not be out there for all Russians, which there are other stereotypes, don't get me wrong, but for me, this is what affected me the most. And that's what you want for your essay. You want something that affected you so much that you want it to make a difference, that you want to be that difference. And for one of my acceptances, which my mom actually read, um, which is from Dickinson, um, they actually quoted me on my essay. And if you don't mind, could I read that? So they said, your application was truly a standout for us, particularly this line from your essay, which was my conclusion. And Dr. Cologne was always saying, you wanna have a strong conclusion to bring it all together. And so I said, I understand that if I can find ways to fight and stand up for my community, I can find ways to combat the stereotypes that are connected with other cultures, which is very prominent right now. I hope to help others find their voices and learn to persevere through the tough times because you only need one person to understand and listen to you to make a difference. And that was my coolness factor in a sense was to just fight for whatever I believe in. And I think that's what um, kind of influenced the colleges to accept me because they knew I was gonna be a standout. I would stand up and I would stand out in their campus to help fight for whatever is going on. So yeah. Mom, do you want to add any, any anything to that? Her coolness factor? Oh, God. Well, just about her essay or anything like that, because I, I have a couple things that, that come to mind and I want to share. Go ahead. I'm just super proud of her essay that she wrote that, that this was what she came up with and what this meant for her, you know, because I did, I tried not to, it's hard, a little bit hard for me, and I don't know how many other moms would say not to get too involved in the process, you know, that this is about her, not that, not me. So I let her, obviously this is about her, so I wanted her to write what she wanted to write about. And I was pretty floored when she came back with this essay. Because, um, you know, I mean, I, I've been with her and in the last year and a half, we've been together every single day. But I get still pretty amazed that I still learn about her and mm. I learn from her. Um, and I was, and then when the Dickinson letter came and it, they quoted her essay, I was, I was, pretty speechless. I'm a very proud mom. Well, Marion, I'm going to guess that you've always been a fighter. I don't think that just, you know, everything that was going on, obviously 2020 was a, was a fighting kind of year for everybody. But I think the, the point being that the strength of your essay came from that it was genuine. They could really feel and know that you were being authentic and true and honest, and that that moment really affected you in a way that maybe, um, other moments in 2020 affected other um, people, right? And so, uh, I just love that story. <laughs> super cool, you are super cool. Okay, so question number four is a little bit, you know, um, about regrets. Every teenager, every senior as they're leaving uh, high school looks back and thinks, you know, what's, you know, some, some regret that they have. So using that regret, what advice would you give to younger people? So what do you, what's your? I would say my, well, I have a few because there's never just one, but a main one is pertaining the college process was that I did the essay camp, which was great. And that was in the beginning of summer. And after that, I did not look into my essay until I applied, which was what, September, October. And I did this camp in June, right after school. And I regret not doing that because there were a lot of more things that I wanted to say. And I should have taken time, like evolved through the summer to keep looking at it, which I wish I did, but I'm happy how it turned out at the end. But I wish that I could have had more, I should have been able to look more into things in depth in the sense of the essay, what I wanted to say, because for UCs, there are multiple essays. It's not just one. And just to check them out more. I wish I was able to do that in depth. And I also wish that, yes, there's COVID. I wish COVID didn't happen, but so does everybody. And I just with school, some functions I wish I chose I did and schooling and choosing my time wisely, I wish I did. 
but those can always be changed in the future. But for the essay and for college, I suggest to look at it over time. You shouldn't just stop and do it. You should just keep looking at it and make small changes. Or if you like it, you like it, great. <laughs> but yeah. That's a great point because as we, as you know, we do go through the essay camp and everybody ends up with you know four to six essays, but there's so many more details and so many more essays, supplementals. So, so it's, a, it's a way of tweaking and retweaking throughout the, the rest yeah. of the, the journey. I, I have an item to add to that actually. Yeah. I think one of the, when we were, when she was starting to work on her essay and her applications, one of the questions they asked are all the awards and all the accolades you get starting in your freshman year. And if we had done anything different, I would have recommended starting to write those things down as they were happening. Because now in the beginning of your senior year, we're trying to remember what happened at the second semester of your freshman yeah. year. My brain doesn't work that well. So I think if you just, as you are going, keep track of things. Um, I found that I, I wish she had done that and that, you know, Naviance allowed for that, but we just didn't start doing it until we were getting to the application process. But I wish we had started that from the beginning of high school. And it takes most of the time. That's like all the time. Literally everything could be, everything's so simple until you get to that portion because some schools want it to be in depth like you have to write a decent amount for each thing or some schools just want to be what year did you do it when did you do it what did you do it and that's it so you want to have all these certificates and all these awards or things with you so you know specifically even though they won't check you they still want to hopefully you be honest and be perfect for that because you're showing yourself off um we sometimes say that uh, the college application process is like taxes for teens. You have to have all these documents and yeah, like you, you have to remember everything and Elvis won't let me, like he's trying to get some time here. Okay, so the drum roll is, the, here, we, here we go, we're on the last question. So I want you to share uh, what three, two or three that you narrowed it down to and then reveal to the world where you're headed. Okay, so this is kind of tough for me because I didn't narrow it down at all. I literally got it. My first acceptance was my first choice, which I was very lucky with, which doesn't happen to everyone. And I, off the bat, I knew what I was going to. And I literally told my mom, I'm going to accept it. She said, no, Marion, wait and make sure you're thinking because where I'm going now, which I'll tell you in a second, is a big decision. And so... I eventually chose before Thanksgiving because it was rolling admissions that I was going, let's see, can you see this? St. Thomas University in Woo! New Brunswick, Canada. Woo! Congratulations! Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so am I correct? This is the this is the school that you were saying that yes. reached out to you and you felt like home and it was right. That's the one. Yes, this is the at. first college I actually looked at in depth and it became my number one choice and all the stars aligned. And now I'm going to start there in September. But she did, but we did make yeah. sure she looked at everything at another seven schools. We yes. Did not, yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we did yeah. not allow her to have all the eggs in one Eight basket. Schools, yeah. I just want to make that very clear so, that we still wanted her to cast a wide net and look at a few other things. Yeah. Because did you, were you thinking about applying to Canadian schools or that just happened because of the, of you? It oh. happened because of the pandemic, which kind of, I got a great shot at it because I never thought a pandemic would happen and it happened and I never thought I'd go to a Canadian school and it happened. I was actually looking at a school in um, Ireland for a few years and I was super involved in thinking about it. It didn't really work out because of COVID. And I still want to do international. And you kind of forget Canada is an international country because of how close we are and how in a relationship between the United States and Canada, it is a country, even though they sometimes sound like us. So I was super excited. And another, after I got accepted, the big issue was yes, scholarships, which you want to start right away. You don't want to dilly-dally on that. You want to actually start, finish it, get it done, because that's very important. And citizen, uh, not citizenship, student visa, which was supposed to take 
um, what is it? How many months? They initially said like six, six months. months. Of COVID. Um, but then I got in four days. So if you're doing international schooling, which I highly suggest because it's a one in a lifetime chance that just do it. And if you don't like it, you can always transfer, but at least you have no regrets about it. And I don't have any regrets about that. Yeah. Cause we had to start looking into the student visa situation, Very especially quickly. doing during COVID because we know it's going to be a little more challenging. Yeah. Uh, and that was actually very detailed. I ended up having to fill out the majority of information because yes. they wanted banking information. They wanted financial information yeah. because they wanted to make sure she wouldn't be a, a dredge on her, on their society. So, I mean, the questions were pretty, I mean, that's kind of how I was told about it in Canada, you know, they want, because they had an option where if they, they're not happy with things that they would make you create a bank account, hold a bank account with a lot of money. Um, but they just, for them to confirm that, that yeah. we would be able to support her. So, I mean, if, if your child does choose international, make sure you're looking at what it takes to, to get them to be able to study there. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask another question to mom, especially. So um, I remember vis visiting UBC, University of British Columbia. That was the only Canadian school I visited. But I remember feeling like the, uh, the exchange on the dollar was actually really good. Like it's a good it's, option financially. Is, am I correct, mom? Oh it my is God, so it's good. good. It's oh my good. God. The, the, what, uh, the tuition this year, well, for my year, which is going to be next year, is about 28,000 Canadian. Which is approximately what? 21,000. 21, and I actually, because yeah. I got a scholarship there for $7,000 for the first year, I actually, and that's Canadian. So I technically start with the $21,000 tuition, which goes to about. And well, 18. let's say 20, then let's, when, when she says 28,000, that's including living and board. Yes, that's everything. That's all in. So um, it was. A really great and most of the Canadian colleges are all in that range um, and that and that's us paying the international rate which is nearly twice as much as what the yes the, the Canadian rate would be if she was a, a Canadian citizen and what is it called and it's only a school with 2,000 students which is what she wanted which what is what I wanted I wanted a small school so if you should choose what type of school you want to and focus your time on that because there are so many schools out there with so many amounts of different varying of students. And I wanted a 2000 small campus. So this became very competitive in a sense for some people because there are a high number of international students. I know I'm talking to a girl from Peru who might be my roommate. I'm talking girl from um, Nigeria. Nigeria, the Bahamas, Mexico. It's a very worldwide school and there's only two thousand, about 2000 spots. So I was very, for I was, all four years. For all four years. So I'm very, I was very persistent. I wanted to get into school. I was very working hard to do it and I got in, but you have to know what it takes. You have to realize it's not going to come easy. You have to fight because they're like Dr. Clone said in the beginning, there's probably so many students that look like you. Um, they're not you, but they look like you. So you have to stand out. And I stood out through my essay. I stood out through all the things I've done. I tried my best. And out of that best, I got accepted into six out of the seven. The, se the last one made sense. I wasn't upset. I wasn't very upset about it. And I'm happy where I'm going. But you have to know what you want. Well, can I also add something yeah. that I found was really important that we also started talking to her about? And I'm, I, now I'm being kind of mom-like, parent-like. Yeah. We started talking budgets from from uh -huh. years ago because um, there's only a finite amount of money that, that we could contribute. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we have we were lucky to have a budget for it and we'd put money away for it. But it was, I mean, some of these colleges, the range and how much you're paying is in, insane. I mean, Dickinson, if I may say, she got a $20,000 scholarship from them, but the tuition is $74,000. So even with a $20,000 scholarship, it's $54,000 a year. And it was about, you know, here's what the money that this is a lump we're going to provide to this. But if you want to go beyond that, you're going to have to look at financial aid. You're going to have to look at grants. Because um, one of the things my husband and I had decided, we're not putting our retirement on hold for her to go to college. 
that was just not something that we, you know, I'm a little, we're a little bit older and we, we want to retire and have a life too. So we wanted to make sure that she knew from the beginning what our contribu contribution would be. And she had such a great process of thinking this that she knew what the budget was. She knew what we could afford to do. And she wants to stay in that because she didn't want to take out loans for her undergrad. Yeah. Um, she wants to make sure that we're, she's going to be coming out of this in four years without owing, none of us will be owing a dime. And that's that's what's the most important, that was a big important factor for her and for us. Well, you heard it straight from mom and daughter. If most teens and most families are looking for an academic fit and a personal fit, those are the two fits. But often we talk about the financial fit. And what mom just said is what we, uh, our philosophy is have that open dialogue with your child, have that open conversation and whatever your budget is, be sure that they understand early on in the process. I can't emphasize that enough and look at what Marion found. So she was also admitted to schools in, in the United States and she applied, as she said, her safe places being in California, but she found a great, a golden nugget and made that her home. And it's going to mean that she will graduate without any debt. And it's also going to mean that her mom will also not have anything to pay back as well. So, oh my gosh, you guys, thank you so much for letting us go a little, like this is the longest interview we have, but it's been so <laughs> informational. I feel like there's so many golden nuggets that um, you guys, little bombs that you dropped of really good information. Elvis must really love you too, because he's not, he has not done this for any interview at all. He sits in his bed and he just leaves me alone. Um, but let me do a big wrap up. So just hold tight here and we'll wave goodbye to everybody as I, after I wrap up here. Well, thank you for spending your Saturday morning with us. It, this was so in, inform, informational, and I hope that you got just as much as, uh, as I did out of it. I've learned some more things even myself. So thank you so much for spending your time. Parents, if you're still watching, if you do nothing else today, join us on the Facebook group, Destination University, Y-O-U. It's for parents of college-bound teens, no matter what age your teen or preteen is in this process. It is where um, all parents just like you are, and that's where also I give my insider scoop. If you want to learn more about this process and more about what Marion was talking about, I've created a little mini training so that um, parents and teens can watch and learn about the essay and the application and what it all means. And yes, you're seeing that correctly. Ed, uh, students or admission folks have six to 12 minutes to read your application and basically try and fall in love with you as you saw they fell in love with Marion. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, and then these videos, this whole series will be posted on YouTube and um, scheduled to uh, air in June on YouTube. Tomorrow, we're going to meet Miles. Miles is choosing between Michigan, Purdue, uh, UC Santa Barbara, and UC San Diego. Will, will he go Midwest or will he go to the beach? Who knows? So stay tuned tomorrow, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific time. As always, I like to thank our team. It takes a village to make all of this happen. And this is the team here and they have been incredibly fabulous. So shout out to Alexandra and Grace who are seniors in high school and Vanessa who is a sophomore in college. So there you go. All right, Marion and mom, wave goodbye. So, so proud of you. And uh, gosh, you're gonna have such a great time. Please let us know how you're doing along the way. I will. All right, wave goodbye and just hold tight. I'm gonna just stop the stream here. No, Elvis, <laughs> craziness today. Always senses our dogs. <laughs> We're still snoring. <laughs>